Let's move on to Pop Quiz Hot Shot. That wildcat behind the wheel. Don't try anything. There aren't many facts to be found about this movie. So instead of giving you 10 facts about the film, I've decided to list, not really list, but point out the, the most absurd moments that I think need to be appreciated even more. Uh, and this movie is full of absurd moments. So here's 10 of them. A really good 10 that stood out to me. Uh, number 10, take two. When David, another name, D-I-A-A-N. Uh, David was dying. Dying? They was right. dying. I think they're trying to talk to you. What the hell is going on? Take two. When David Dion's character appears Dion. to make it. When David. When, Dion. It's Dion. When David Dion's character appears to make a mistake during his first take, showing an apartment to Paul Rudd's character, and then takes it back to try a second take, and both takes are used without cutting. But what do you expect for 850 a month? The inner. What you see is what you get. But what do you expect for 850 a month? The International Space Station mirror out there, over there in outer space. Number nine, purple stuff. Come on, do you think that was truly a mistake or do you think that was left in? I think it was a mistake. I, I, I think that it was a real like actor taking it back and trying it again. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was a mistake in the editing or anything like that. It's definitely intentional to leave both takes in. You think so? I think so. Okay. The landlord thing was... Um, that really was just an actor who had had a lot of trouble. So we had shot a bunch of different alts uh, and we're throwing, we were throwing him a lot of different lines to try. And he was really confused and just not even <laughs> sure what was going on. And so I remember sitting in the edit room with our editor, Eric Kissack, and we kept watching that clip of him screwing up just because it made us laugh so much. And then of course, at one point we're like, do we just put that in? like it is <laughs> and then we did uh i hope so it's it's brilliant okay number nine purple stuff how the ending of the jaffe brothers story without warning turns into an upbeat 90s sunny d commercial like it's like an episode of step by step from the 90s or some shit like that or yeah uh, what they really did if you noticed it they took uh different strokes to uh they played in on that remember like like you you know yeah, like yeah. like yeah, yeah. Okay. i get it no you don't they, they primary colored it You're right there you go number eight misplaced heartfelt moments so there's a few uh, really heartfelt moments in the movie but they all take place between relationships you would you would never expect them to so you get a heartfelt breakup between a ventriloquist harlan swallow and his dummy i haven't been happy in a long time and a heartfelt breakup between big buster and uh Dr. Ritchie. You and I have been going through the motions lately. We both know that. Number seven, disbarred. When Judge Sophia R. Jackson disbars the prosecutor, played by Zach Orth, for no apparent reason. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, you, you're disbarred. Me? Why? What am I going to do? And no explanation. Number six, fighting a puppet. Mather Zickel fights a puppet. Number five, f***ing a puppet. Winona Ryder f***s the puppet. Number four, the best worst acting. Winona Ryder's many amazing emotional outbursts that just go above and beyond over the top. I guess she won't be making the wall. <laughs> I will smack you in the face. I mean, she, it was great. It was just terrible on purpose. Number three, I mean, I actually, because you see her in Stranger Things, she's pretty much always at that Level. 11. Number three, praying. Praying? Jason Sudeikis' character, Tony Contiella, being on his knees in the uh, in the Lord's name in vain story for no reason at all. Hey, how's it going? Oh. No explanation. Yep. And he also shows up in his knees the first scene in the, uh, the, uh, the, um, in, the uh, in the hospital. And he gets up off his knees. When they cut oh, him, he's on his knees again. He gets, hey, I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and appreciate <laughs> that. Mean, yes. Number two, the character names. Here are some character names from the 10. They, uh, usually this is where movies drop the ball. They just phone it in when it comes time to put put names on their characters, but not these guys. You get... Sheila Contiella. There's uh, Marty McBride, not McFly. Clovis Handelman. Michael Showalter plays Police Lieutenant Flarn Blurn, a prison guard by the name of Carlos Lopez Gonzalez Banderas. <laughs> Luffy Levinsky, Barry Noodle, Greg Splenda, 
I'm Breen Benson. So I'm Harlan Swallow. And oh, of yeah. course, Jesus H. Christ. Harlan Swallow was my favorite, though. <laughs> and number one, the ending. The 10 out of nowhere ends as if you have been watching a school musical production the entire time, and then it goes into music in the credits that practically describe either parts of the film or something that's happening at that moment in the credits when the song is playing to like ultra specific detail. I just want to change one thing about that thing you wrote everything's factually correct except for three words when you say out of nowhere. Anytime we like to reference a movie ending out of nowhere I think No Country for Old Men should be <clears throat> what we're talking about. Alright really quick before we move on guys uh, if you guys didn't notice here we got on some pretty decent funky looking wardrobe here. We got the commandments on the chest. Dave Tell them what you're, is a hell of a number. Tell them pump your chest and pegs and tell them what you got, what's going on with you. What, why'd you choose that commandment and tell us about it? So I chose, we, we, we decided to put on our shirts, so, or at least we did, uh, so I did the, the commandment <laughs> that I'm most guilty of, which is put in other gods before, or you should put no gods before me. And I put no gods before God. I don't put. Uh, there's there no, no there are Easy no cowboy. gods at all i put no gods before god i definitely put no god before god because i'm an atheist and if i was to put a actual god before the hypothetical god that Easy is written in these commandments it would be jesus all hell well i was that's what I, they, they won't be looking at it now because when you said that they're definitely like, oh, he's, he's fine he's fine <laughs> I, well the reason why i chose my commandment is the hypocrisy oh, i'm gonna let you finish Ah, okay. I see what you just did there. Let him finish! <laughs> Which is also erotic in some type of way. So many lines that are erotic in this film. I chose this commandment because just like the film placated on certain commandments and showed you how, you know, ironic they can be, uh, mine, if you can tell, is thou shalt not kill. I find this ironic that that is one of the commandments in the Bible that was given to us by certain people. And those people who gave us this Bible now have people go kill us. Careful so, I, I, uh, I can wait till I <laughs> leave. Oh, okay, I, got I just wanted to be the white guy. That's, so, hold on now. You're yeah. going to upset people. Hey, well, I mean, listen, we're riding the needle now. All right, so with that being said, hey, listen, thou shalt not kill. At least listen to your own <laughs> man. All right, so now that we pissed off all the white people and the Christians, let's move on to... Oh, let's bring them on back. Chick-fil-A's open, guys. Oh, sh**. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's not Sunday. Anchor, you're getting it all tonight. Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer.